There are many things that come to mind when you think about cruise ships. Luxury vacations in tropical climates, exotic places to visit. This is not that kind of cruise. This is a white trash cruise on the Baltic Sea. Welcome to Celia Symphony, the ship that will take me from Stockholm to Helsinki. It has 986 cabins and room for 2,852 passengers. Celia Symphony was built in 1991, so she's more than 30 years old by now. But uh, she's still a lot of fun. I love these kind of cruises. They're filled with cheap booze, cheesy activities, decent food and colorful passengers. Let me show you the cabin to begin with. This is an A-class cabin with a Moomin theme. If you don't know what Moomin is, you're missing out. They're Finnish cartoon trolls and they're quite endearing, even though they look like hippos. But then again, who doesn't? They were created in 1945 by the Finnish illustrator Tove Jansson and the Moomin stories are actually pretty weird. Anyway, this is my glorious cabin for the night. These ships have cabins ranging from really expensive suites to E-class cabins down by the engine rooms. If you book an E-class cabin you have to be prepared to be really drunk. Otherwise there is no way to fall asleep with all the noise and the smells and the knowledge that you're way way below the sea line. The A and the B class cabins are the most common ones. It's not very glamorous but it's enough for a 3 star vagabond. And would you look at this, I even get a sea view. You don't get that in the B class cabins. Look at that window, it's really really dirty. Oh well, it's a view anyway. Let's wave goodbye to Stockholm. Goodbye Stockholm. Hope you have a good midsummer. I think mine is gonna be pretty good. Let me show you a little bit more of the ship. These corridors leading to the cabins aren't all that exciting, but uh, tonight they'll probably be crawling with drunk people. The interior of the ship can best be described as uh, tacky. It's nice, I like it, but it's not exactly high class. And that's because its intended audience isn't all that high class either. The promenade actually looks pretty cool. It's like a little shopping street inside a ship. It's not all that big compared to similar shopping streets in big Caribbean cruise ships, but keep in mind that this old lady is more than 30 years old now. Back in the 90s, I think she was really impressive. Now, after you've seen a little bit of the ship, let me tell you about the history of these Baltic Sea cruises. Boats have traveled the Baltic Sea for a long time. It started with post boats between Sweden and the Åland Islands, but passenger traffic really took off once steamboats became available. One of the oldest still remaining routes is from 1909 between Sweden and Germany. These days there are boats between Sweden and Estonia, Finland and Estonia, Sweden and Latvia, Sweden and Poland and Sweden and Germany. But by far the most common route is between Sweden and Finland, with a stop at the Åland Islands in between. The two main ferry companies on the Sweden-Finland route are Viking Line and Tallinn Silja, and there are endless debates about which of the two companies are best. Silja, this company, used to have better quality, but uh, then they were acquired by Tallinn, and the quality went down. The best summary of the real difference between the two companies can be found in a TripAdvisor comment. Viking ships are red and Silvia ships are white. So what can you do on these cruises? Well, you can get drunk. 
Okay, there are some more things you can do. You can stuff your face at the buffet, for example. The food is pretty good, but you should take that with a bucket of salt, because I'm not a food. But there is unlimited beer at the buffet, I'm just saying. You can also listen to live music. There's always a troubadour at the pub and a band putting on a bigger show on the grand stage. If you're into old-timer music and couples dancing, there's some of that as well. And finally, there's a dance floor that opens up at night. It's a proper hive of scum and villainy, full of drunken people staggering around trying to find a last-minute hookup. And don't forget the karaoke. There's always a mix of Swedish and Finnish passengers here, so half of the singers are annoyed at the other half for picking songs that they don't understand. You can also waste money on old casino slot machines or play old arcade games. The arcade games are supposedly for kids, but everyone knows that's just a pretense. The real target audience is drunken retro nerds. The weather in both Sweden and Finland can be really fickle, but if you manage to catch the boat on a day like this, it's bloody brilliant. Millions of people go on these cruises every year. It's a combination of transport, party cruise and leisure activity. A big part of these cruises are financed with tax-free sales of alcohol and tobacco. Alcohol is taxed extremely high in both Sweden and Finland, so this is where people can buy cheap booze. But how can they sell tax-free products on a cruise ship between two EU countries? Well, that's where the Åland Islands come into the picture. Åland is an independent nation and not part of the EU, so by stopping at that tiny little island nation, these boats can continue to sell cheap beer to thirsty Finns and Swedes. If you want to do something more relaxing, you can always go to the spa. But beware, on many of the Baltic cruise ships, the spa sucks. On the Syria Galaxy boat, for example, the spa is small and cramped and the view is non-existent. But there are a few exceptions, and Celia Symphony is actually one of those exceptions. The Sunflower Oasis Spa has a lot of hot tubs with a really cool view. Not too shabby. I call this cruise a white trash cruise, and it's for a good reason. These cruises are infamous for attracting the worst kinds of people, myself included. These cruises focus on affordable partying, so they're popular with young people, cheap people, or people with no taste, or a combination of all of the above. I'm really making myself popular here, hope I'm saying this right. It's a sort of guilty pleasure for Swedes and Finns alike. We know they're white trash cruises, but uh, they're also so much fun. These cruises used to be a lot wilder during the 80s and 90s, but uh, these days there are lots of rules about not drinking the alcohol you buy from the tax-free, and the price of alcohol has increased a lot in general. A couple of decades ago, these boats were filled to the brim with depraved debauchery on every single trip. These days, it's a milder form of debauchery on every trip. Speaking of depraved people, there's something else I need to mention. There's a lot of organized crime on these boats. The police did an investigation in 2015, and they discovered that during one week, there were 241 hardened criminals boarding these cruises. And we're talking serious crimes being committed here. Human trafficking, drug smuggling, and high-stake thefts. There's apparently a lot of drugs coming in from Russia via Finland onwards to Sweden and the rest of Europe. Right now in 2022, there's a lot of sanctions against Russia, but I highly doubt that that's stopping any of the drug trafficking. Behind the happy exterior of these party cruises, there's a lot of crime. But that doesn't stop the party-loving Swedish and Finnish people from going on these boats. It's easy to forget the darker things in life when you're indulging in cheap drinks in a happy place. That was a quick look at what you can expect from a white trash cruise on the Baltic Sea. I hope you enjoyed it. Now it's time for me to get properly sloshed and for you to like and subscribe. But most importantly, have a great day. Oh. 
we're actually off right now, so it is time for me to get sloshed.